go for time. time. We're going to talk all things hockey. And I can't believe they picked you, of all men, in New York <laughs> yeah. City, who knows nothing about the great I ice am sport. the, <laughs> your hockey expert. But yeah. but today I'm going to keep it quiet and let the I, analysts. I would, li I would like to file a formal complaint about the <laughs> bias <laughs> here in the front. I don't know if they can see it, but it's all Islanders. I brought my own props. One analyst came with sorry, equipment and one sorry, didn't. Sorry, Look, sorry. I'm hoping the facts will be my equipment. <laughs> oh. Well, we will kick it off with exactly that. Our first topic of the day is, well, we're in New York, and uh, you happen to be a diehard Ranger fan, and you happen to be a diehard Islander fan, yeah, so yeah. I'm just going to throw the floor out to either one of you and talk about who you like better and, and why. Well, first off, if we're trying to measure what makes which franchise better, Rangers or Islanders, it, there's no question about the Cups, which is ultimately the biggest prize. He's like, I'm just going to sit back and let you make my case for me. But... It's business. So we're talking about money here. If we're talking about dollars, Forbes values our franchise, the New York Rangers, at $1.5 billion. Whereas the Islanders, a measly $395 Measly. Million. Measly. Yeah, I say that as I'm like, <laughs> right, you know, right, I, got, right. I got a roll full of quarters in my pocket. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you there. I mean, obviously, that's why he's the hockey expert. Look. Well, you, He's you, setting it up. First beautiful. of all, the question itself, it's, it's obviously from an NBA guy because... Really, to compare the franchises is really difficult because the New York Rangers are a New York City franchise. Right. The Islanders have always been the stepchild. They came into the game late. We had to pay. Uh, uh, remember, we had to pay you guys a fee to even to get, get to the in league, the league. Yeah. Four million dollar fee, which Bill Torrey actually had to borrow at the time. Didn't have the whole fee to pay you guys, so yep. we barely got into the league by the skin of our teeth. And the Islanders have been, uh, you know, a mom and pop operations and sometimes poorly run poorly operation run, for uh, a lot of the franchise. So no, we're not at the money machine uh, maker that the Rangers. Changes are being in New York City and stuff like that. But what would what would be your let me yeah frame the question a little differently. What would be your way of uh, persuading a youngster to become an Islander fan instead of a Ranger fan? Well, I tell you, the two biggest things right now for the franchise is our head coach uh, Barry Trotz, who won the Stanley Cup last year, and our president of operations, the general manager Lula Morello, who has three cups with the Devils. Yeah. And I, being a lifelong fan since '72, I've seen the good days, I've seen the bad days. And again, like Stephen knows, our, our franchise has been poorly run for a long, long time. And thankfully, with Lamorello and with Trotz, there's some real hockey people. And the people in New York know that uh, they like, are building like a new us. building in Belmont, hopefully in two years from now, which will be a beautiful facility. Uh, they've got brand new practice facilities, which is big, a big deal for athletes today. Even guys in the NBA will tell you they want beautiful practice facilities. They want the facility itself to be nice. These things that are all coming, we've got a lot of good young kids. And it's a franchise on the rise. I could actually see the value of our franchise going going, it going up when Belmont is, is built. It should. And unfortunately, to counter your point, well, actually, to support your point, where you guys have hockey people in place and smart guys with a proven track record, the, the MSG crowd, we've got James Dolan, unfortunately, who has mismanaged <laughs> every single piece. Let's just say if he was no longer the owner... You would see everything improve. You really think so? One hundred percent. Yeah, because I don't know problems. if I even could say that about for the Knicks for basketball. If he, I mean, it's a heated debate. But well, he's he he's more hands off with the Rangers than he is with the Knicks, which would show you how bad and terrible the Knicks are. But still, just that culture that he brings, just all of the the poor decisions that he makes, and he just shrugs it off like, oh well, fans aren't going to want a rebuild. They're just they want. That's the, the bad part about having a, a franchise that's, you know, an original team in a major market. You're, there are certain expectations you think that you're supposed to be perennial winners. And if you check the, the standings, we are no, we're nowhere near that right is, now. Is Dolan willing to throw his, his wallet at no. everybody in the league, not in the NHL? Because he is in, no. in the NBA. That's, he hasn't been cheap. That's one thing you could say about him. But for the throwing basketball. money at the problem isn't always the best thing because you'll throw money at a guy. It's not like basketball where if you get three guys, the whole game changes. With hockey, you have to have a, a deep roster. Uh, you have to have a system underneath. You have to have a structure in place to see what the next draft class is going to be. To see, You have to have like the Mets problem. You have to have good trainers who can take care of your players. And but I'm James saying, Dolan is he, is he willing to, so he's not I even willing so. to 
He's just happy. I'm just here to own a team. <laughs> I mean, part of the problem with Dolan and the Rangers was his relationship with Glenn Sather also. They were buddy-buddy, and Glenn Sather could do no wrong no with Jimmy wrong. Dolan. Yeah. And we had the same thing with Charles, Charles Wang and Garth Snow. And Garth Snow, while he made a good move here and there, for 12 years, basically, he was a failure as a general manager. But because of the relationship with the owner, and much the same with Dolan and Sather, they, they just let things go because and I guess especially in the Rangers, relationships with as the long press. as they're making money, like you said, Dole, yeah. as long as the franchise is making money, and you got the guys in suits and ties that are walking across the street and you know filling up the suites every night, Doesn't I don't know matter. if I don't know if Dolan cares about winning. You yeah. know that's the thing with the Ranger franchise. I agree. We don't know about that. And they always got good press too. Garth Snow, for some reason, when the owner puts his weight behind it, they weren't very critical of Garth Snow in the press in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Sather. It was, he could do no wrong in the mm -hmm. press. And now we're, the Rangers specifically are feeling the effects of the press now finally going, wait, wait, this isn't acceptable. Maybe you're going to have some billboards coming like we had uh, last year with Garth Snow in Brooklyn. Oh, no. The Snow Must Go billboards. It came to, came to that with us. At least we didn't have a fake owner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Did you ever fake? see that documentary? Yes, That's a great documentary on John Spano. There was a guy that uh, faked his way into buying the Islanders no back money. in the oh, uh, uh, early 90s, I guess it was. He bought the team with no money. Yeah. He was a complete fraud. He owned the team. Like, literally, <laughs> he had the team in his possession, but no money behind it. Yeah, he, he totally he totally fooled the National Hockey League and the whole hockey world. And it's a, there's a documentary. I forgot what it's called. It's probably on Netflix right now or cable TV. That's but check I it out. It, yeah. yeah, it's really good. Really well done. <laughs> 